My name is Carrie Haber, and I am the author of the short play that this film is based on. The story is semi-autobiographical in the fact that when I moved into my house years ago, we were looking around and uh, there was a cabinet uh, in the house, it was built in, and inside there was all sorts of historical information about who had built the house, who it was built for, and um, there were photos of all the changes that had occurred over the years to the house. It was over 120 years old so uh, it was really interesting to me and it inspired me to write this. It feels really amazing to see the story brought to life by so many talented cast members. Uh, it's very gratifying uh, and it really makes me want to continue writing stories uh, and it's, it's just really great to see the talent um, that's here and how they have kind of put their own spin on things and really brought the story to life. I have lived in, I personally have lived in my home for almost 50 years and uh, but what I love about this story is the house is the constant and the people come and go, all the generations that come through that one house. I just love a story like that, thinking of the history that the house has seen. Uh, I think this story is just a super beautiful way of showing that all people and families um, have good and bad memories. I think it's just a really good way of showing that even though there's some not good memories, there's still a beauty to all of it. We leave a little mark of ourselves in the abodes that we leave behind. There is a blank space underneath the stairs. Uh, my father, Rod, shout out to Rodney Montgomery, made this so that it pops open, revealing woo, a secret cabinet. That old phrase, if these walls could talk, um, every house could tell a story, but people have stories to tell too. And um, this is just a small little glimmer of those stories that live in that house. I'm headed up to finish cleaning and grab the last few boxes. Then we can get going. Can you please hurry, Dad? I've got to get to practice. Keep me. Oh, I'm gonna miss it here. So many memories. Yeah, well, 50 years in the same place will do that to you. And don't get me wrong. I'm gonna miss your grandpa too, but... I'm gonna miss this place. I suppose the new owners will finally fix this banister. How come you and Grandpa never did? Oh, well, for your Grandpa and me, this banister was a reminder of a really difficult decision we had to make. It turned out to be one of the best decisions of our lives. What do you mean? Well, I know it's hard to believe, but when your grandpa and I were younger, we argued a lot. Hmm. We were both young, passionate people, and we each hated to admit we were wrong. Bad combination. But grandpa was always such a happy-go-lucky guy. Oh, not always. Once, a long time ago. I think your dad might have even been younger than you are right now. Your grandpa and I got into it. Well, his job was stressful, money was tight. We both had a lot of unrealistic expectations of each other. 
of life in general. What happened? An accident. So, your grandpa and I had been arguing and I told him I did not think I could do this anymore. No more of the arguing day after day, week after week. Not to mention the effect it was having on your father. You said there was an accident? Yeah, so, your grandpa and I had been arguing yet again. Your father heard it. He got upset. So your father comes racing down the stairs at top speed, crashes right into the banister, broke his arm. So that's where that scar came from. Mm -hmm. His arm was never the same after that. <laughs> Neither was the banister. But seriously, it, it took your father's accident to put our perspective back where it always should have been. And not, not on our own irritations, everyday limitations. I'm helping each other, you know? Celebrating the small victories, becoming the best version of ourselves. I never knew that man. <laughs> that sounds hard. Oh, it was. But your grandpa and I decided then and there, that night, that we were going to stick it up. No matter what it took. Well, it's a daily decision, but it got easier all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Hannah. I miss it. Uh, I'm gonna be alright. Oh. Hey, what's going on down here? Oh, just uh, reminiscing. Well, I hate to break up this love fest, but the truck's all packed with the exception of these two boxes. And we need to get you to practice. I'll be up in a minute. Let me get this for you, Grandma. Don't be too long. Thanks. Careful, just a little farther. Perfect, right there. Perfect. Henry, would you like to do the honors? Oh no, this was your idea. Your gift to Rose, please. more than I ever could have wished for. 
It was the least I could have done. For your brothers and the men down at the hardware all pitched in and helped as well. I know it's not finished yet, but it'll be done before the wedding and before winter comes, I promise. Henry helped out quite a bit too. I can never thank you enough. Thank you, Henry. Do you mind if I look around? Well, please look around to your heart's content here. Sorry. That's on my list of things to complete. I'm headed out to the shed to fetch my tools, Mr. Bogarty. And I'll come help you when Rose goes back to the house. Then. Yes, sir. Father, what's this? That was your mother's idea. A rose for a rose. It's a place where you can put your important things. Like this. A log where you can keep records of the house. They might think I'm old fashioned, but I'm not naive enough to think that you and Henry won't make changes to this place over the coming years. I don't even live in this house yet. I can't even think of changing it. Well, you can add rooms or maybe indoor plumbing or, or those fancy electrical lights your, your mother fawns over so frequently. It's just like mother to be concerned with keeping records. She's been keeping your books at the shop for over 20 years now. Details have always been important to her. Well, it's more than that, Rose. But you don't know what life's going to bring you in 50 or 100 years. With any luck, this place will still be standing. And, th and that can help tell its story. And yours, too. But, um... What is it? Well, I, I don't want you to feel like you're stuck here. I know it's an unfair statement to say after I build a house for you and Henry. But, um... But your mother's not... Your mother's not doing well. She's not getting any better. And I need your help. I know, Father. And I'm here. Henry and I are both here. We're not going anywhere. This is where we want to be. But what about New York? Any music studies? That's not important anymore. It was a dream bigger than me in the first place. Besides, I can continue to study. The Francis just across town. <laughs> Francis. Francis isn't exactly a professional or an educator. It will be enough. Well, I appreciate the sacrifice you're making, and I don't take it lightly. Everyone makes sacrifices, Father. It's just a part of life. You and Mother have taught me that by your example. All my life, I've watched you sacrifice for our family, for those in your employ, for our church brethren and our neighbors. The more I grow, the more I see your servant hearts. And now that you've created a home for Henry and me, I don't know how to say thank you. Well, just promise me some grandchildren before I get to be an old man. Rose William, come quick. It's Eleanor. Hello, 
love, sweetie. Hi. Oh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, Mama. <laughs> and you too, Ernie. Merry Christmas. Let me take your coat, Mary Ellen. Why, the roads are really bad out there. Not to mention your front walk. I shoveled the front walk once already this morning. Well, it's not fun to drive in, but nothing says Christmas quite like a fresh snowfall. A close second would be the pitter-patter of little feet coming down the stairs on Christmas morning. Mother. You talk about spot mittens. We've got that covered. I'd swear those animals knew it's a holiday. They had me up at 5.30 this morning with all their scuffling around underneath the tree. That's not what I mean, and you know it. Ernie, would you be a dear and check on the ham at the oven and bring in the tea service? Yes, of course, dear. Thank you. Here, let me help you finish. Oh, Grandma Rose would be so pleased to know you're using her good china and silver. Honestly, we should bring it out of the hutch and use it more often than we do. Couldn't agree with you more, darling. <sighs> well, I do wish you had let me to bring a dish to share, but darling, everything smells so wonderful. Well, everything but the potatoes are ready. Probably another or 20 minutes or so. Oh, well. Let's go ahead and open a couple of presents while we're waiting. What do you say? Why don't we wait until after the meal? No, no, no. I insist. I have a very special gift that simply cannot wait. Lucy, this one's for you. Well, then you didn't have to do this. You and Ernie have been married a few years now, and I'm sure a baby can't be too far away. I'm just encouraging it along, that's all. That yarn was from your Grandma Rose's collection, you know. Mary Ellen, I understand your good intentions behind this gesture, but I have to say this is just not the appropriate time place. Ernie. Lucy, my dear. Ernie is well established in his career. You have created a wonderful home in this place and you don't want to be a teacher forever, do you? Teaching other people's children? Ariel, you are not my mother, but if you were, I'd tell you to- Ernie! It's all right. I'll handle this. Handle what, dear? Well, we weren't going to discuss it. But since you won't let him alone, Ernie and I have spoken to the doctors. Several, in fact. We can't have children. <laughs> Darling, I don't know what on earth you mean. This simply cannot be. It is, Mother, it is. We're working to accept this. We also have spoken to Sister Anne at St. Catherine's about adoption. You would do this? You would raise a child who is not your own? Who is not family? I want to be a mother. We deserve the chance to have a family. Sister Anne said there's a good chance we'll get a baby. Although there are older children in need of a loving home waiting. It's a lot to take in. I, I don't know how I feel about all of this. Here we are on Christmas Day and you tell me I'm never going to be a grandmother? That's not what we're saying at all. We weren't ready to talk about this, but you sort of forced your hand, Mary Ellen. I just need some time to sort out how I feel about all of this. The snow's coming down harder now. I think I'd better get home. 
Mother, please don't do this. Don't leave. Christmas dinner is ready and we can't eat all this food ourselves. And we have gifts for you. Stay, please. Subtract 64 and then divide by 8 to get x. Try that. I don't know why we have to do this anyway. I'm never going to need to solve for x in real life. Oh, honey, you don't know that. I bet your dad has to use algebra all the time at work. Well, you can ask him because he's going to be home soon. Now, what other homework do you have left? I finished my writing assignment, but I still need to read chapter 6 for American history. Okay, are you still on the Lincoln-Douglas debate? We moved on to the Reconstruction period. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the South shall rise again. <laughs> oh, hi, honey. Okay, uh, why don't you finish up that really good homework you got left? Okay, and then we'll wash up your wash up your hands for supper. We'll be about twenty minutes. And another award-winning dinner in twenty minutes. Right. I uh, I got a frozen pizza. Something quick. So you all have time to go see that, that movie you've been talking about. Uh, what's it called? Um, Back to the Future. Oh no, I completely forgot. I can't tonight. Anderson needs me to go over these reports for the committee meeting tomorrow. No, John. Jonathan's been working so hard on his homework all afternoon. And he's been talking about that movie for weeks. I can't help it, Trish. What do you want me to do? I've got no choice. I've got probably another four hours of work ahead of me tonight. You're telling him. I should have known. Should have known what? That something like this could happen. John, you've missed the past two baseball games. You've missed parent-teacher conferences. You even missed last weekend's trip to see your parents. John, something's got to give. I am so glad you're keeping track. Look, I know I've missed a few things lately. I get it. But I'm doing this for us. Anderson is picking a new VP soon. Do you know what kind of a raise comes with that? Plus a company car and an expense account? I'm doing this for us. At what expense? John, I feel as though I never see you anymore. Let alone go out on a date. And, and now you're reneging on a promise to your son. This isn't the man I married. Yeah? Well, what about you? You used to cook. Real food. Uh, this place used to be spotless and you were the prettiest girl around. He was me. One of us had to take a job to keep us afloat. And that comment about my appearance. As if I have time to go to the gym anymore. Gym memberships cost money, Trish. That's right. And I spend all my money on new baseball cleats for Jonathan. And on making the house pay payment. No. No, 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 no. I forgot to make the house payment. No, oh, no. That's going to be a $20 late fee. I can't believe I forgot. How could you forget? Oh, I don't know, John. I guess between showing our son back and forth between work and practice, working 40 hours a week at the store myself, and trying to maintain everything at home, I don't know. I guess my personal assistant must have taken the day off. I don't. Anymore. By this, you mean this? All of it, the, the arguing, the nitpicking, the feeling as if I am never enough for you anymore. Feeling as if I am married to a stranger. 
or not married at all. Are you saying you don't want to be married anymore? I don't know what I'm saying, John. I'm tired. <laughs> You're tired? I'm busting my mouth 60 plus hours a week here. What more do you want from me? That, that's it. I, I want you. I want less work, less stress, less Anderson and reports and committees, more us. More time with your son. John, we could live in a shack. I don't care about the money. <laughs> a shack, Trish? Come on, we've got a good life. No. No, we don't. We haven't for a long time. And if you think that we do, then you are completely out of touch. What do you want me to do, Trish? Quit my job and go see a counselor? Yes. And yes! Stop! Stop shouting! Just stop it! I don't want to hear it anymore! Ah! Oh my gosh! Oh my god! It my arm! Can you move it? No! No! We've got to get him to the emergency room. Yeah, I'll get my purse. I'll get him to the car. <laughs> and then, and then he said, You're not gonna believe this, but I'm the bartender. <laughs> oh, Ben, I forgot. Oh no. What? What did you forget? How incredibly charming this place is. Oh. <laughs> we looked at it more than three months ago and all the bank paperwork. Just, I mean, I knew I liked this place, but I forgot how us it feels. This is home for all of us. It'll feel even more like home. Once that moving truck gets here with all of our stuff, where are they anyway? You know, I don't think I ever told you this, but ever since that first meeting with the real estate agent, I dreamed of this place. Hmm every night for two whole weeks. This is going to be our house. You're right. This will be a wonderful place for us to start a family. No response. This is getting ridiculous. Did they stop for a steak dinner or what? Would you stop worrying? They'll be here soon. We probably better be ready. Speaking of which, I am claiming the upstairs room at the end of the hall as my new office. Hey, now where am I gonna put all my comic books, records, and Fidget's toy collection? That I'm gonna be sharing with this little guy someday. <laughs> I'm kidding. I think it'll be the perfect place for your writing. Yeah, it has a great view of the magnolia tree out back and the servant stairs lead right into the kitchen. It's like refill my coffee anytime. I'll get your desk and shelf set up just the way you want. In fact, I better refresh my memory on the upstairs space right now. Okay. Well, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna stay down here and take a look around. Okay. Oh my word. The 
this is incredible. Ben! 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 What? What is it? Come here. What you got there? I can't believe this. What you got there? Well, that's a handsome looking couple. That's this place. You know, I think I know what my next book is going to be about. Let's change that.